Hi, everyone. Welcome to the, I don't know, pesticide session, what it is. Ooh, OK. So uh, I don't know, you, you, you know, probably know me. I already bothered you enough during the keynote and saying that you should follow me on Twitter, as Matteo Fellini. So it's written on the bottom right of the slide, like the first slide in the, in the keynote yesterday. Anyway, uh, so uh, this, uh, um, this talk, this talk is a story, OK? And it's a story of a bug, OK? You know, little bugs. I mean, it, 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 it can move around. It, this is, do you think that those have lasted good lasting effects? I don't know if this is something that is still true here. Anyway, this is a story of a bug. And uh, why it's a story of a bug? Well, because when we, I was uh, doing my, um, when I work on this stuff from time to time, people often ask me, well, can you just do a talk or a blog in which you describe how you fix certain performance issues? And, uh, and that's the idea from where this talk <coughs> came to be. So uh, when I assembled this talk, uh, I was just thinking, well, maybe I should, uh, you know, uh, when I was thinking of what to pr present here at OpenJS World, I was just, well, let's bring uh, some real world performance um, uh, discussion or uh, real, real world performance improvement and, uh, uh, and describe how I, how I did certain fixes, okay? So, uh, you probably know Fastify. If you don't know Fastify, okay, you're in the wrong room, sorry, but you can go, no, I'm, I'm joking, okay? Uh, uh, it's a web framework for Node.js. It's not super relevant that you know Fastify well for this talk, just be careful that we are talking about Fastify. In fact, we are talking about Fastify v4, which was released today. Hello. OK. So I shipped, hopefully. And I didn't, I didn't make a mess. OK? So that shipped, that shipped this morning. I finished, I'm finished preparing my talk, and then I, uh, I, uh, I, I did Fastify v4. OK? So it's, it's, it's shipped and out. So what I'm talking about is all, is, all, is all out today. So, okay, let's go a little bit on detail in, in Fastify and talk about a specific feature of Fastify itself. So Fastify does not have middlewares, okay? Fastify has a concept of uh, uh, request life cycle. So essentially, you, uh, there are certain phases in which you can inject code in the, in the request, in the life cycle of a request, and that's it, okay? So the first thing that we do is routing at the top, then we have, uh, we get loggers, and then we have hooks, then we do the, we do, we pass our bodies, and so on and so forth, up until we send the response, okay? And then we even have a look after the response is sent. Why it's needed, that's a long story for you. Anyway, uh, what, uh, why is this important? We'll come back to, to that in a second, okay? But it's, uh, that's what we do with hooks. Um, the other fe key feature of Fastify is the plugin system. As I, show, as, I, as I usually often say, well, it's what can be applied in Fastify, what can be done as a plugin should be a plugin, okay? So that kind of uh, 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 being open to uh, developers to just inject behavior wherever they want. What, what does this mean? Well, it means that everything can be wrapped uh, in, in plugins. We can have roots, but we can also have co concepts like the hook we're talking for or decorator. What are decorators? That's our key point. That's our key. Okay. So, in fact, we have the concept of encapsulation, which means that whatever I define, we define in a plugin does not exit that plugin. How is that uh, encapsulation implemented? With prototypical inheritance. Fun topic, okay? And we'll talk about the prototypical inheritance in a bit. Um, you could, in fact, call the decorate method in a plugin and add some be some functionality or behavior in your plugin or Hadoop or other stuff, and those will be exposed to the underlying level, to the underlying plugin. You could even break encapsulation using a little utility called Fastify plugin, okay? And that will pub get the behavior published to the to the uh, up, upper level. Okay, so it's a story of a bug. Why are we talking about all this stuff? We'll see that clear in a moment, okay? And 
intensify, you know, it's calling the name, right? We want to have no overhead. I'm very proud of this thing being fast and not adding overhead. What does it mean uh, 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 being, making something fast? Well, it means that you need to have, you know, it doesn't need to add over, it needs to be very quick in, in, in doing its job, okay? In fact, you know, the, this is a phenomenon slide from James, okay, that is totally still the, the slide from James, in which he describes the event loop as essentially a, 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 a chunk of function calls in between nothing, okay? And uh, basically, the event loop is actually waiting for something, then there is an event, goes into C++, goes to JavaScript, goes back to C++, and go back in waiting in, in, uh, at the lower level. Now, the funny bit here is that if we want it to be fast, we need this to be very quick, okay? We don't want to wait. Well, most of the time, you're actually spending time in the microtask queue, but that's a different story, okay? The actually heavy weight here is this microtask queue, but big time. Anyway, we have our event loop, and we want it, all of this to be fast. And how come we can make something fast? Well, we need to leverage the optimizing compiler. We are getting deep and deep and deep now. It's a little bit, uh, I'm sorry, folks, okay? So the optimize, how does, how does V8 work? V8 has this concept of, uh, uh, it has several compilers available, okay? One of those is the so-called, uh, 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 so it has, a, uh, it, it's a slow compiler, okay? It create, first of all, it takes some, uh, 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 it starts with slow but generic code, okay, which is right now already compiled, and then it's uh, one it's running, and it uh, it takes what is this next? Oh no, sorry, I put the slide in the wrong order. You see, the can even look like this, huh? Told you I was I was finishing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, I, I made uh, I flipped the slides. So uh, what uh, V8 does, it's, uh, so we have, uh, as this is Node.js, okay, with this libuv, uh, six lines, unicorn, velociraptor, okay? That's, uh, I don't know, if you don't have libuv, it's the dirty logo of libuv. And, uh, and basically what we do in Node is that we load some JavaScript, V8 compiles the JavaScript in some binary code that is low but generic. What does it mean? It, V8 does not know what it's running, okay? But it's, it's just binary, binary code. However, as soon as those functions get called and called and called and called more time, what it does, it takes the slow but generic code it, com it compiled before, added some uh, binary, uh, added some execution metadata, and it generates some more binary code that is uh, uh, fast but specific to, the, to your function. So the fundamental part is that it can, it learns how you use the code, okay? and it needs to take the, this execution metadata. What is the execution metadata? Well, if you say, if you're calling a function with an integer, and you call that function always with an integer, what it does, what V8 does, it learns that you're calling that function with an integer, and it automatically, well, compile it to handle integers. So if you're not passing an internet, what happened? An integer, what happened? It, you know, you're not passing a string, says, oh, V8 says, oh, I can't run that function because I optimized that function to run integers. So it takes the fast but specific code that he has compiled and it goes back to the slow but generic and then it goes back in the cycle, updating the uh, execution metadata. And now the function will be recompiled a little bit and uh, will be able again to run both for strings and uh, integers. Cool, okay? So, now, we are going back to one more topic, and this is the fastify tail of shape. Tail of shape, okay? So what is a shape? That's the topic of the talk. And uh, uh, the shape is, uh, it's essentially a JavaScript object, but it's not just a JavaScript object, okay? Let's say that we have uh, 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 the concept of a shape as two properties, one uh, in, in a specific order. So it's X and Y, okay? And a JavaScript object A, let's say, um, refer to the shape, the, the shape definition, and uh, it, it keeps the value in the same in the same order. That's how internally V8 represents our data. And if I create another object with the same uh, 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 the properties, those properties in the same order, 
it will keep the same shape. Why is this important? Because the optimizing compiler can just say, oh, but if you are sending, uh, calling this function with an object that always has the same shape, I don't need to say, I don't need to look up in the shape where is the property X or Y. I can just put into my binary code to just read at that specific object in, 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 in uh, that specific uh, 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 property in memory, okay? So I, ju I just know when, uh, where, uh, where the value of, the, of a given property is in memory and I don't need to look it up again, okay? And find where the, that property lives. Essentially, I am making the property way faster to read. Cool, so what happens when I add another property, okay? Well, it happens that it, you, you, you are getting more shapes, okay? So you are actually altering the shape of, uh, of, of a document, of, of, of your object. And you see, you see that you have two objects here. You have object A and object B. Both have three properties. The first one, I have the two properties defined in one go. And the third one, I have the th so in, in two parts, well, the x1, x y2 and Z3, while on the outside object, I am defining that as a single liner, and they will have different shapes. Okay, what does this, why does this matter? It matters because if I'm passing the functions with objects with different shapes, it will st the, the, I will make the job of, my, of the optimizing compiler significantly harder, and therefore my code will be Slower. Are we in agreement? Yeah, okay. How do we debug shapes? Very easy. You can, uh, you can use this uh, percent F same map and it will basically tell you, you can, if in order to do that, you, you need to have a low native syntax and it will more or less do this trick and tell you if something is uh, 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 the same shape. Cool. Where do, where do you learn this, this stuff? There's a phenomenal from the V8 team themselves. It's uh, uh, Matthias Binance. Uh, this is uh, Matthias and Benedict talking about this at JSConf U 2018. It's a phenomenal talk. So just, uh, you know, if you want to learn how to do this kind of thing, this article, it's, it's fundamental. Okay. So, um, this is, okay, you can take pictures of, of this guy, of the guy. Uh, so, okay, we are talking about the fact that this was a story of a bug. So, let's talk about the bug. So, in the, in the documentation of the decorators that we use in the, going back to the, to the original point, okay, uh, we had, uh, we said something very boldly that we were using this decorator system so that we could actually make sure that the object always had the same shape. And therefore, Fastify was faster because of that. So we were incentivizing people to uh, putting stuff on the decorator. This was actually true. And has been true for a long time in, uh, uh, for the Fastify uh, life. We, are, we were, today we are in version three. And I think this was true till version two. But in version three, we made a bug. We introduced the bug. And in fact, uh, 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 thank you, and you rep whoever reported this, okay? Somebody reported us that, no, um, it, it, it was actually not true anymore, okay? We made a mess. Um, so it sent us this code. Let's just look at what this code does. So we have our Fastify instance. We decorate the request with a user property, very common, right? If there is a, a X user header on our pre handler hook, we are just setting a rec dot user property. And uh, we want the, all the objects to have the same map. That's totally what this code does. There's a problem here because uh, this code actually did not work as expected. If you call things multiple times, it will do, um, uh, it will not work. It will start returning both true and false, or one after the other, like it was not having the same shape. So, up, oh, didn't work, damn it. What can I do to fix it, okay? 
This is hard. The box. So the trick that we did to fix it, and this is actually very funny. So when we define in, the, in our system our rep request and reply object, and you call, you call the decorator, we are actually iterating over all the, pro all the, prop uh, the, prototype, the property definitions and actually setting it to null inside the constructor. So literally, all the objects created in reply, in request and reply, will always have all the properties defined in the same order and therefore have the same shape. Okay, stupid, but effective. Uh, you know, it's, uh, how do you fix stuff? I just uh, not, at, uh, 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 there is a link to the PR, so if, if you want to go through it, it's very, it's very readable. So now, it's a search bug, right? And it's, you know, did you think you this fixed it? It didn't. So, oh, so it didn't. So, uh, unfortunately, the shape were still different. Well, it was, it solved the problem that we, that was mentioned here. So this code now were returning the same shape. But, uh, 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 unfortunately, it still didn't do exactly what we wanted because the shapes start to be different now when we are using the plugin system. So again, how come it's possible? We have no, like all of those have the same, uh, 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 you know, we are not even using the decorators here. Like, it is so funny. We are not even using the decorator, we're doing nothing, okay? It just routes. How come they have different, like those things should be equal, right? But they were not. Which means that all of Fastify was actually running with, with uh, uh, a megamorphic code. If, if you, if you, it was running in a slow mode. Okay, good, t good time. Okay, so we could actually. Oh, I can actually improve stuff here. Okay, yeah. Why? So going back to encapsulation. So uh, uh, the reason how the, the encapsulation system works is uh, we. Uh, we create, and you can, we create the request and response object as uh, in a prototype chain. So basically, it, at every level, we create a new, uh, a new prototype, okay, a, a, new, uh, a new constructor that inherits from, that we, we target this prototype, the rest of the, the, the one at the previous level. And we do this every single time, okay, even if you use it or not. Why? Because we never know when you will attack, do some decoration, so we can essentially do anything different. So, in order to implement the encapsulation, whenever you register, you register a plugin in Fastify, uh, we are essentially creating a new requ re reply and request object from, from the previous ones, okay? So, very interesting because you can see this is the Fastify plugin itself, okay? And uh, this is the Fastify instance itself. So what we do is that we call object.createAll. This syntax enables you to create uh, a, a, another object that inherits from the previous one. It has all the prototypes and behaviors of the previous one, but you can add properties to the new object and it will not be shown in the, in the parent. It's great. But, and this is where it gets tricky we were doing this, uh, we were creating this new request and reply object. Given that those are in a prototype inheritance chain, uh, those will have different shapes all the time. So the encapsulation system was actually working against me. And then, here is the question, how can I fix this? Okay, so sorry for bug, and I fixed the bug, okay? Well, let's look at it. So the reason why it was different and have a different shape is because we did request.prototype and we created a new object. So, so the prototype was actually different. However, we were already tracking the fact that we had pro properties here, okay? So we already knew inside this function that if, uh, uh, that there were, there were pro uh, properties defined to us. So essentially, inside uh, when I'm doing this, uh, 
kind of uh, behavior, I, was, uh, I could actually track the fact that uh, uh, at any given level, the request and response objects were actually modified, okay? If decorate was called, I know if decorate is called. So the final fix for this was this. Very, very simple. What we are doing is if the request has been decorated, if the request has not been decorated, I am actually unwinding and using the prototype of the previous level. Essentially making sure that I'm only creating new encapsulated context if there is a need, if the, the object was actually modified by the user, if the constructor was actually modified by the user. That was it. And uh, those little bit of lines, very funnily, okay, uh, were uh, able to give me 10% more throughput. <laughs> Made no sense, they were applauding me and it was the right moment for an applause, okay? The, just this change alone made me, uh, and in fi finally I was able to actually fix my two bugs, okay? It was a long discussion on, on a, a nice, a little bit of a story. So, yay, um, again, so, so follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the newsletter, thank you. And uh, um, yeah, that was, uh, uh, that was the talk, okay? I, I hope you uh, enjoyed it or anyway. I don't know how we're going on time, so I think there's some more time for questions, I presume. So, um, yay, go for it. So the, the, the way I identified the original uh, uh, problem is I look, there are certain flags that you can pass in V8 and uh, which will show you if a function is being optimized or not and uh, if a function is getting de-optimized and re-optimized. And that's exactly where, what pointed me to the, to the fact that it's, uh, so that can tell you that you have the problem Okay, that being said, it, uh, all of this was totally taken from our docs, okay? Like somebody uh, opened a question and said, you're claiming something or your docs are not true. So it's, uh, I, I, I did not uh, add to do any story on, or any research on the topic. Like, uh, again, this is improving the performance, uh, right? So this is improving the performance of, uh, uh, of Fastify a little bit, but I was, literally not looking for improving the performance in any way, okay? It's just, you know, when they pointed me to be it's a little bit, it improved, but it's, you know, not, I was not looking because essentially for me it was a really rough time, okay? Go for it. Um, so when I originally, so the question is, it, what during the maker or do, during the making of Fastify, how much time I spent profiling V8 versus the code itself? Uh, in, well, to be honest, uh, at the beginning, we have done an extent between, when TurboFun came out, probably c circa 2017, 2018, I have done a massive amount of research with uh, one with my colleagues like David McClements and James Nell and so on and so forth at the time on the TurboFan engine and how to write code that would run well on TurboFan. And uh, at that time, we did a lot of uh, research on, on V8 itself. Uh, the la in the last period, like V8 has become so good at running code that uh, you don't need it, you don't need this level of deep, digging deep into V8 anymore most of the time. It's um, apart from, you know, if you want to do, um, if you want to put the language to the limit, like to some extent what we are doing, I'm doing in this in certain Fastify features, like encapsulation, it's not, uh, you know, JavaScript is not a good language for, for doing those things. So doing it in a performant way was uh, uh, required a little bit more uh, digging deep into the thing. Cool, amazing. Okay, there's a question.
Okay. I'm trying to, to re uh, repeat your question. It's, uh, so uh, let me tell if I understood it correctly. Uh, are there ways, so JavaScript was, uh, is, is a scripting language, okay, and it's not, it was written to write application faster uh, versus other language like C++, like C Sharp or Java or others that are uh, 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 strictly typed and compiled and uh, we can actually, uh, they can actually be more performant. Uh, so, and, and, but then I'm lost and I don't, uh, Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Oh, how do we standardize, how do we standardize this? We don't, okay, it is a problem. It's, <laughs> it's uh, uh, that's the fundamental issue is that we don't, okay? So um, that's the actual problem of, of it. So you can't standardize those type of things. It's, uh, um, the problem is because you, you have certain behavior that are codified in the standard. Like the fact that you have, that these two objects have different shapes, okay, it's important for certain things in the JavaScript spec. So you cannot, impl not implement it in this way. So the JavaScript spec, spec actually says that certain things about in the, this, for, for, for these things. So you can't, you will still have certain class of those problems. However, the, like the, all the uh, runtime teams are actually spending a huge amount of effort every year to improve those stuff. In fact, uh, V8 rec recently shipped, um, uh, I think last year shipped a new, co a new compiler to uh, actually uh, make sure that the non the, the no, a non-optimizing compiler, okay, that, you know, it will actually improve the, make the baseline faster so that the, some code cannot be run on the, by TurboFan and it cannot be optimized. It will still run more or less faster now. So the gap between the two things is actually very limited and narrow at this point, but it's still worthwhile to, like in certain cases it can, Literally, in this case, it will kill around 10% of, uh, of optimization, which is, you know, it's, uh, uh, that's what would you expect from those type of changes. Should you do that on all, your, on all parts of your application? I don't think it's a good idea, okay? I, uh, the reason why we did this kind of optimization in Fastify, and we do similar kind of change, optimization like that in Node.js, it's to, um, make sure, it's to make sure that the lower level of the, uh, of the Jenga, uh, uh, of the Jenga tower are, uh, are actually very solid and performant. So that w if you want to slow down, it's, it's on you, it's not on us, okay? Because we said the, 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 the like, the, the lower level of the pyramid of, of the big tower will let you, will tell, well, you can't go as faster, you can't ever go faster than this, right? You will be, you will always go in slower, okay? Every, link, every layer that you add. So that's why, in fact, like we care a lot in those cases, but most application, in most applications, will not have uh, this kind of problem in, uh, to, to worry about, unless you need to get the latest bits of the performance uh, from, from it. In uh, what we have seen, I don't think so. What we have seen, uh, I'm, I'm uh, let's put it in, so I don't have a definitive answer here. I have some, uh, and I've, done, I've not done any research myself. Uh, a friend of mine did some research on TypeScript, uh, on, the, on the performance of the code compiled by TypeScript. And it was the, code compiled by TypeScript was slightly slower than manually written JavaScript. Typically because TypeScript, depending on your flags on TypeScript, so first of all, TypeScript is not a language. It's a metaverse, it's a multiverse of languages, depending on the configure of, of what you put in TS config. So saying that TypeScript has uh, 
TypeScript can be can mean everything, okay? But based on those flags, it uh, it adds certain additional checks in your code that actually can slow you down a little bit. So it's is it worth it? Well, you need to be careful on what you put into into your TS config file uh, before compiling it. Okay, you can literally throw a branch in your in your code without even knowing it. So in a late in, a, in one of our uh, latest performance analysis that I've done for a client, we actually found that because they were targeting ES5 in their TypeScript configuration, actually because one of their dependencies was targeting ES5 in the um, in their TS config configuration, not not their code, but something they were using. Uh, they were actually compiling a sync await down to generators. And uh, then you, they, th that alone was like 30% of throughput, something like that. It was insane. So, to read, to, to mention something. So I'm not, I'm not seeing TypeScript improving, uh, helping out in those things. It's, uh, uh, unless they uh, maybe add a flag. So they one of, in, th in that meta metaverse of languages, there can totally be one where they, there are specific optimizations in that sense. But uh, uh, so far the TypeScript team has not been keen in, uh, in adding a flag for that. Cool, go for it. Yeah, that's exactly it. So you actually, so if you want to write code that is uh, uh, runs as fast as possible, okay? Uh, when you define the properties, always define all of them. So, and create and kind of use uh, object, fact, uh, object factories or new to create new objects of a certain type. That's it, really. So there's nothing else. Cool.